Construction on a fix for San Francisco's leaning Millennium Tower is partially back on track with some test drilling underway this week. KPIXY's Max Darrow has been all over this story and joins us live from 301 Mission Street with the very latest. Max? Liz, construction crews are back here and they're working on a new installation of two casings with a modified technique that they say will cause less vibration and settlement. Everything came to a stop in late August because the fix was actually making the tower sink even more. And now we're hearing some of the damage could have been avoided. Millennium Partners wanted to get the thing wrapped up. Robert Pike is a geotechnical engineer and an early critic of the current so-called perimeter pile upgrade. He says the $100 million plan to shore up the sinking Millennium Tower should have been stopped months before it was. Certainly the end of June, it was obvious that there was enhanced settlement as a result of installing the casings and the piles. We asked him to review engineer logs and internal emails obtained by KPIX5. This chart produced by geotechnical engineers on the job show the accelerated sinking started in mid-May, but work on the project continued through June and July. In this email on July 29th, the engineering design review team hired by the city to oversee the project warns building officials the design team has suggested to the 301 Mission Homeowners Association that the installation of 36-inch diameter casings along Mission Street be paused. But the suggestion has not been acted on and the project is continuing to move forward. On August 4th, lead engineer Ron Hamburger finally confirms the project has placed a voluntary moratorium on 36-inch casings. But drilling continued to install smaller 24-inch piles until August 23rd, when Millennium Tower's general manager finally announced a pause in all construction for two to four weeks. I credit the E-Dirt with applying the necessary pressure uh, to cause the work to be halted, but they shouldn't have had to do that. Uh, any responsible engineer would have called a halt, as I say, by the end of June at the latest. He says the fact that construction continued for two months caused more damage. Another half to three quarters of an inch of settlement. And he says the continued drilling may have even exacerbated a sewage problem at the luxury high rise detailed in this August 26th email. Even a small change in gradient might upset the plumbing, both wastewater and sewage. In a statement to KPIX5, lead engineer Ron Hamburger admits some of the sinking could have been avoided by halting construction earlier and in a letter to building officials he also admits the new test drilling could cause even more sinking however he assures that none of this should affect the building's safety but one thing is for sure all of the problems at 301 mission street seem to be having an impact on property values we found 10 condos listed for sale all at discount prices zillow estimates that this luxury condo 9c listed for 1.75 million dollars was worth about a million dollars more just five years ago some have been on the market for months unit 14h for a bargain eight hundred ninety nine thousand dollars has been for sale for nearly a year Pike believes concern over real estate values might be one reason why the Millennium Tower Association pushed to continue the job. That would suit the existing homeowners and the homeowners association because once it was completed and the sidewalks are restored on Fremont Street and Mission Street, there's no question that the property values will go back up. Yeah, I'm wondering, you know, Max, people are living in this thing while this work is going on, uh, temporarily stopped. I'm wondering what does the Homeowners Association have to say about all this? Ken and Liz, the Millennium Tower Association, which represents the homeowners, is still not commenting about the story. But interestingly, though, we found a presentation that the lead engineer, Ron Hamburger, gave in 2021, in February of this year, uh, to students at the University of Minnesota, where he actually said that property values really are at the core of all of this. Take a look at this. In it, he points out that there is no reason structurally that the building needs to be upgraded. Homeowners needed a major retro fit to revalue their units. So what are the prospects for current condo owners in the building that are selling their units now? 
real estate experts that we reached out to did not want to go on the record to talk about this, but one of them did access current data for us, and what they found and shared with us was that since January, 13 units in the building have either expired or have been taken off the market. Wow. Ouch. All right, Max, thank you.